Have you ever had such severe neck pain or headaches that makes you just want to stay still for the entire day? And then somehow while looking for relief, you end up watching compilation videos of chiropractic adjustments, hoping that it somehow will relieve your neck pain. There's a good chance that you've seen a few videos showing people performing spinal manipulation using a tool called the Y-strap. And, and if you're wondering if it's safe and how it works, stick around because in this video, I'll give you my take as a physical therapist and I'll give you three treatment ideas and alternatives to the Y-strap adjustment that you might consider if you have neck pain. Hey, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I'm Tim Fraticelli, I'm a physical therapist. And on this channel, I make videos about physical therapy treatment technology and product reviews to relieve your aches and pains. And this video is going to be a little bit different because we're going to do a reaction, but also give you some treatment ideas if you do have neck pain. So I think it's going to be interesting and worth sticking around to the end. So what actually happens during a neck adjustment using the Y strap? Now it's, it's called the Y strap because the adjustment happens along the Y axis of the body as the neck is distracted. And in its simplest of terms, a distraction is a technique that relieves compression. Now, the easiest way to think about distraction is to consider your own finger. Now, we can distract the finger at its joint, and sometimes it makes a popping noise. It doesn't have to make a noise, but when it does, it's called cavitation. You get the point. Ah, just kidding, that's the old thumb and tooth trick. Now, the reason we hear this noise is because as the joint surface separates enough, it creates a cavity of gas within the joint space and makes a popping noise because of it. Of course, within the neck, we have seven cervical vertebrae that sit on top of discs between each vertebral body. And in the middle of all of this, literally in the middle, we have a spinal cord that runs along the entire spine with nerve roots protruding out at different levels so we can move and have sensation through our body. At each of these segments of our cervical vertebrae, there are facet joints, and these allow movements between the segments and that's where the popping occurs. Of course, when you crack your fingers, there's not too many things to be concerned with, like major nerves and arteries, but we do have this concern at the neck, which doesn't mean it's unsafe to crack your neck, it just means that you should be careful, especially when it comes to high velocity movements like we see with the Y-strap manipulation. Now, if you're going to a chiropractor or a physical therapist, or an osteopathic physician who have been trained in these types of mobilizations or manipulations, the risk of injury is very low. But if your friend grabs a towel and says he wants to try this ring dinger Y strap maneuver on your neck, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that you shouldn't do that. It's not very smart. Now there are a few more reasons why spinal manipulations may not be a good idea, especially if you have certain obvious bone disease like a fracture, vertebral artery disease, inflammatory joint disease, osteoporosis, and other reasons, which is really important why you check with your doctor or your chiropractor or your physical therapist before you do anything that you see on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, let's watch a few of these Y-strap manipulations and get my reaction on the adjustments. All right, so let's take a look at some of these Y-strap manipulations and maybe we'll throw in a couple of those ring dingers and see what we've got here. All right. Oh. <laughs> She moved like three inches from the table there. <laughs> oh, snap. She just like, jumped off the table. Oh, she's gonna fly. Oh, no. <laughs> it looked like her neck hyperextended. Someone's holding her down. Okay, so if you're gonna, if you're gonna be sliding, I would rather slide than be constrained by the knees. She flew like six inches. I don't know how this feels. I've never had the Y strap done, but I imagine it doesn't necessarily hurt. I'm sure it's uncomfortable for some people. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what? Okay, that was like the farthest I've ever seen anyone slide. The strap broke. <laughs> Why strap broke? No. <laughs> okay, so this chiropractor does a version of the Y-axis distraction using a towel. He calls it the ring dinger. I think it's trademarked, uh, but it's simple in, in terms of the, the mechanism. It's very similar to the Y strap, but he just uses a towel. All right, let's see this. A little ring dinger. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Lamar is speechless, man. <laughs> yeah. So the difference with this ring dinger and the Y strap, you're not going to slide as much because you're being constrained. So in a way, I think it isolates it a little bit differently. 
I don't know which one's better to be honest with you. I think this one's probably a bit more controlled than a Y strap and when you're sliding eight inches off the table. Either way, I'm sure I'm sure these people are feeling quite a few segments distracted and, and cracked. Now one thing that you'll notice in these videos is that the healthcare provider is performing some sort of evaluation or movement screen and they don't always show the full examination or other diagnostic tests and imaging that really helps them determine whether or not a manipulation is right for the patient. And it's really important to understand that a treatment like the Y-strap or cervical distraction in general, it may not be right for everyone, which is why a diagnosis from a licensed professional is so important to see if you're even a candidate for a treatment like this. Now what happens here during this adjustment is either the Y strap or a towel is placed behind the occiput and the jaw so we can put a distraction technique along the spine. What this does is it opens up the joint space between the facets so that's where you're getting the popping and the clicking. Now some of the healthcare providers will say that you'll feel a sensation from the back of your head down to your tailbone. I have no clue how far you will feel the adjustment. I'm sure it's different for everyone. But you can clearly see people are sliding across the table so the force is strong enough that multiple segments I'm sure are being distracted enough for multiple cavitations. There's no doubt in my mind this type of adjustment is certainly aggressive. It's a high velocity, low amplitude adjustment which means there's a lot of force all at once. And so it's not recommended that anybody tries these things at home. Uh, I highly recommend against doing anything like that. It's not a good idea at all. The chiropractors, physicians, PTs that you've seen do cervical distraction have been trained for years on the feel and the safety behind performing these techniques in addition to just screening for diagnoses that may not be appropriate. So it's really important that you go check with your doctor before you consider having anything adjusted like you've seen on YouTube here. Now we've talked about the safety of the Y strap and cervical distraction and how it works, but it begs the question, is this type of manipulation actually effective? Now personally, I have no problem with a trained medical professional providing manipulation on various joints as a way to relieve pain and to decrease symptoms like numbness and tingling from pinched nerves or to increase range of motion. There is research that supports the use of manual techniques in certain cases like these, but the problem is in the thinking that a manual technique like cervical manipulation or axial distraction is the be all end all. Now a lot of times a manipulation can provide an instant relief, but the effects may really only be temporary. And that can have a lot to do with the mechanism of injury or your diagnosis. For example, if you're a relatively healthy person who's experiencing neck pain and stiffness after, oh, I don't know, editing YouTube videos for three hours, it's possible that your poor posture and repetitive stress will leave your neck feeling sore for a few days. Now, even if you were to have your cervical spine manipulated with the Y strap, it doesn't address your habit of bad posture and it won't suddenly improve the strength of your neck and your back muscles that are really important for posture and alignment of the head and the neck. And I find myself fighting this posture battle all the time, even as a physical therapist. And now it can be really difficult to maintain good posture throughout the day for anyone. Over the years, I've adopted some techniques to help keep my neck pain under control. So here are a few exercises that I do when I'm experiencing neck pain from bad posture. Of course, check with your doctor or physical therapist before you try any of these yourself. This first movement actually uses the principles of distraction similar to the Y-strap technique without the forceful thrust or popping. The technique is called suboccipital release and it's best to perform while you're lying on your back. Preferably don't have assistants who happen to be dogs. Place both hands behind your head and you'll feel a small bump just behind your ears. Now bring both hands towards the midline of your head and use your fingertips to create a cradle for your head. It's definitely nice to have someone else do this for you, but it's a good technique to help relax the suboccipital muscles of the back of the neck that become very tense and sore with forward head posture. Another technique I use for self-traction of the cervical spine can be done while sitting in a chair like this one. With both hands behind the head, just under the ears, I can provide an axial decompression with a very light upward movement. This simple light decompression can be a really nice way to experience the benefits of cervical traction. Plus, to be honest, I feel like this light decompression technique over a longer period of time, like a week or two, can be more effective than a one-time adjustment that you might see with a white strap technique. So suboccipital release and self-traction are two ways to relieve compression in your neck, but let's take a look at two other techniques that can really help relieve symptoms as well. So the second exercise is to simply reverse the movement and bring our shoulders back. And this does two things. You engage the muscles between your shoulder blades, promoting better posture and alignment, and you get an active stretch of the chest. And for even more of a stretch at the chest, we can extend our arms back for a few seconds and repeat that stretch throughout the day. 
Fixing your posture can really make a big difference when it comes to resolving neck pain. And that exercise, along with number three coming up here, are just a couple of the posture fixes that I recommend, but I'll do an entire video on posture, so if you're not subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button to catch that video when it comes out. Okay, and the third technique that I use to address my own neck pain and stiffness is by carefully stretching the trapezius muscle throughout the day. And I say carefully because if a muscle is in spasm and you're trying to stretch it, you might actually be doing more harm than good here. By doing a trapezius stretch, I lengthen one side of the muscle, but shorten the muscle on the other side of my neck. The upper trapezius muscle extends from the base of your skull down to the middle of your back, so if it's tight and stiff, it can lead to further compression at the neck, which is why I like to address this muscle in particular. And just placing my neck in a position like this can help the muscle to relax on one side, but it could cause that muscle to spasm on the other side, so you gotta be really careful in how you do a stretch like this. Taking an active approach towards fixing your posture by getting up throughout the day, moving, stretching, doing a few exercises, that's going to go a long way to fix the pain that you might have in your neck if it's due to muscle spasm, soreness, or poor posture. In terms of the Y-strap, I, I think it's a clever device and it gives trained professionals a way to perform cervical manipulations efficiently and safely as long as they're careful in doing it. There are definitely other ways to provide decompression of the cervical spine without dragging someone across the table by their neck using a towel or a chin strap, but I guess that's what keeps healthcare kind of interesting, at least on YouTube. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you found it to be helpful, can you give it a thumbs up so I know that you wanna see more videos like this? And if you haven't subscribed, you can do that here or there, and uh, I'll see you in another video next week.